Every day I'm praying for my guidance, Lord. You're the one I'm totally relying on. Cause people change like the seasons, but you, you have never let me down. You're always with me. Keep me on the straight path. Your mercy out of ways your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Thank you so much for being with us here this evening On The Straight Path We are with you live here this evening This Saturday evening The time is 9pm Mecca time Thank you so much for being with us I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as always To make this next hour an hour of his remembrance An hour of seeking his forgiveness And an hour of coming closer to him ta'ala Through the things that we say the things that we discuss, and more importantly, as we always say, the things that we implement after we talk here this evening about a very, very important topic that really all of us need in order to be on the straight path and to continue to be on the straight path if we are not on the straight path. Uh, we're talking tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, about the virtues of patience. Why it's so important for a Muslim to be a patient person, to be a person who has a lot of patience and uh, no matter how many hardships he goes through that he is always always patient and how can we be this patient person that's what we're going to be talking about here this evening inshallah in the second and third segment and we're going to be joined by Sheikh Muhammad Shabir who's going to be talking to us in detail about these uh, very important points about the topic of patience we also inshallah have uh, our Skype open for you inshallah beginning the, in the second uh, segment and also in the third segment so that you can join us you can share your thoughts with us uh, your suggestions your comments and also if you have any questions also you can uh, and give us a call and share your thoughts with us of course our regular phone lines will always be open for you you can give us a call through that too but skype is always free and uh, you know uh, accessible for many of us so feel free inshallah to call us uh, through Skype in the second and third segment you'll see the Skype ID shortly in the second and third segment I want to begin my dear brothers and sisters by talking here this evening inshallah about the situation of our brothers and sisters in different parts of the world if we're talking about patience we really have to talk not only on the individual level but we have to talk about our Muslim brothers and sisters all over the globe Subhanallah, when we think about those who need to be patient, we think about our brothers and sisters who are suffering right now in Angola, where uh, reportedly Islam has been banned as a religion in the entire country. Um, and I'm hearing from different sources that this situation is true. And even if it's not, uh, you know, 100% true, some you know, of the officials in Angola are denying it, uh, it appears that many other people are talking and saying that the situation is true. I don't have a special, you know, person who lives in Angola to talk to, but inshallah, as soon as we know, we will try to bring him to you. But until then, we need to make dua for our brothers and sisters. We're definitely going through some sort of a hardship in Angola right now, inshallah. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters in Syria are definitely going through a lot of hardships. Not only those who, uh, you know, are inside of Syria and those who are fighting against the oppressors but uh, you know also those who fled for their lives and who especially those who are on the border uh, countries uh, just before i came in here this uh, afternoon i saw a video of uh, you know refugees children syrian refugees they're having problems because of lack of vaccinations and a lot of diseases are coming about some very uh, you know easy diseases to be cured they're coming about because we're having a problem with vaccinations. They're not having the right types of vaccines. So let's make dua for them. Let's remember them in our prayers. Of course, our brothers and sisters in Burma, uh, even though the media is not talking too much about it right now, the situation is still very bad. It has been bad for tens of years for these brothers and sisters who have been denied their rights. Um, the brothers and sisters also all over the globe who are suffering, maybe Muslim minorities living in different parts of the world. Uh, you know, places where there is political unrest in the Muslim world as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite all the Muslim ummah 
and to bring peace to the entire Muslim Ummah bi'ibnillahi ta'ala and to make every single Muslim country be ruled by the Sharia, ah, be ruled by La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah because really that is the one and only way that there will be progress, that there will be development, that there will be security in Muslim lands is if all of us go back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if all of us go back to the Qur'an and Sunnah bi ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, inshallah in a moment we will uh, take a look at our weekly social media segment where we ask callers and scholars uh, to, uh, you know, callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and scholars on Facebook. Uh, we uh, take their messages and their Facebook status updates and we share them with you. They're ready right now, so let's go ahead and take a look. Mufti Ismail Menk. A negative mind will interpret the most positive messages negatively, but a positive mind extracts the best, even from a negative message. Yes, mean Mujahid. Sometimes the ones that are there for us most are the ones we take for granted. Dr. Bilal Phillips. Allah owns us. So whatever Allah puts on us, He has the right to do so. We have to believe that it is ultimately the best for us, no matter how harmful or evil it may seem. Sa'ad Taslim. Getting you to focus on people's sins and weaknesses while ignoring the goodness in them is a great accomplishment for shaitan. Noman Ali Khan Low self-esteem is rooted in many things. One of them is not spending time to appreciate the gifts we've been given. Abdu'l-Badi Yahya Don't let your victories be the beginning of your defeats. Stay humble, stay strong and have faith. MashaAllah, very beautiful messages from these callers and scholars. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them uh, for their great knowledge and their great wisdom and for sharing these uh, status updates with us on Facebook. I would definitely recommend that you, uh, you know, subscribe uh, to uh, their pages and like their pages on Facebook, also on Twitter. I'm sure they have uh, accounts there, so follow them on Twitter as well, inshallah. You'll definitely, definitely get a lot of great information. And not only those people we feature, but also other people, you know, who could be of benefit. Um, inshallah, should go ahead and, and uh, uh, you know, share their thoughts and their updates and, and, and you know, spread the information to all those who you know. It could be a great way of even indirect da'wah. Maybe you have someone on your list who's not really trying you know, to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but what you can do is send them this indirect message that they can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this very uh, you know, easy way and really indirect way of trying to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by maybe reading a status update that you put on there sometime. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed all of us in this Muslim ummah with the great honor and the great obligation to remind each other. And that is why tonight's episode is really a reminder, a reminder about patience, that all of us, no matter what kind of hardships we're going through, we need to be patient. Even in our everyday lives, when we deal with our children, when we deal with people on the street, when we deal with our coworkers, when we deal with our employees, when we deal with our employers, we need to be patient. And we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us patience. And we need to understand that this life is really a test. We're not here to have an easy life. But we're here to be tested. Sometimes things in this life will be easy. And that is really a taste for Jannah. Sometimes things will be tough. And that is a taste. I said taste, not test. A taste of the hellfire. We get to taste some of the goodness and we get to taste some of the bad. We get to taste some of the good, some of the bad, so that we can be tested, my dear brothers and sisters, and so that we can understand that really this life is not meant to be easy. But those of us who pass the test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them happiness in this life in a great, great dwelling, which is Jannah bi ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for those who are patient, 
in the afterlife. We'll take a short break, inshallah. When we come back, my dear brothers and sisters, we'll talk about this issue with Sheikh Shabir in greater detail. We'll open up our phone lines and our Skype so that you can give us a call, share your thoughts and questions with us. See you shortly, inshallah. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on a straight path. Your mercy out of ways your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on a straight path. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters, to our program, The Straight Path. Thank you so much for continuing to be with us here this evening. Let me go ahead, inshallah, and remind you of our phone numbers. Our phone, uh, our phone lines are open beginning right now, inshallah. One of our numbers is 002-0238-555-249. We also have a new cell phone number for you that has been with us for a few weeks now. Feel free to give us a call on that number also if it's easier for you. Our phone lines are open beginning right now, inshallah, and we are taking your questions. Also, we'd love to hear from your, your thoughts and comments so that a lot of other people who are watching can also benefit uh, from it. We are talking here, my dear brothers and sisters, tonight about patience. Patience. And uh, you've been very patient with us with, uh, with our Skype account, so I want to go ahead and remind you with that. It has been down for a while, but now it's back. Alhamdulillah, it's Huda underscore TV. Huda underscore TV. That is our Skype account. Feel free to add us right now. We are with you live. We have uh, someone that is uh, talking with you, chatting with you live, and then answering your call in order. So uh, feel free to give us a call right now. Of course, as you know, Skype is free. So uh, join us at any time. Brothers and sisters, uh, join us. Of course, we'll only be taking audio. So sisters can uh, feel free to join us uh, at any time and call us as well, inshallah. I'm joined in this segment, as I told you in the last segment, by Sheikh Mohammed Shabir, who is back with us here on the program. It's a pleasure to have him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for being with us. Good to be with you. Jazakallah khair. So let's begin. Um, um, you know, we're talking about patience. If we had to define what patience was, what would we say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah bil alamin. Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaam alaykum. Uh, I think that uh, we we're talking about the definition of pa patience. Patience. The opposite opposite of patience is impatience or anger. Mm. I don't really uh, know the definition, the dictionary definition of your patience, but I think it's basically. Uh, Patience is when you are in control. You keep control of yourself, mm. composed, uh, no matter whatever the conditions change to. Your emotions, your feelings. Emotions, your feelings. Uh, so the, to, to look at the, the, uh, the different uh, situations where you, know, you need the patience, uh, th there is, there is we will cover about two to three different areas Please. where you really uh, need to exercise patience. It's, an, it's a virtue that it really, some, some of us may be born with it, but it needs to be acquired. Mm -hmm. It needs to be acquired, and our deen, mashallah, is, is, is co you know, covers it comprehensively. Uh, I will quote a few uh, ayahs from Quran later, inshallah, as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly States, you know, in, in Quran, many, many places. Ya uh, yulazina mm. amrusta inu bi sabri wa salat. Inna Allah ma sabiri. Or you who believe, you know, take help from from the prayer and the patience. Mm. And Allah is always with the with the one who who's patient. Are these two things uh, interlinked? Salah and patience. Salah and patience. I, I, well, I don't really think. I think the you know the uh, this uh, salat, obviously, you know, there the, the must be a, a link. That's why they come together. But the, the patience itself is, is really, you know, the, the Salat is something that should change a Muslim. It should change a Muslim. And uh, it's also, uh, patience comes with, with many other things. Mm. So it comes with Haq and, and Sabr. I think that the uh, the patience, uh, we we English speaking uh, nations and people all over the world, uh, there is there is a a time when you suddenly have something happens uh, unexpectedly, and most of us come up with 
the four letter English word, mm. which I don't want to mention. Of course, but yeah. but of course, but this is the thing that that you know immediately comes to our you know mm. to, to our tongue to our tongue. Mm. And a, a Muslim, just imagine if you ha if you ha if you have an accident and you die with it, and your last word would be that four letter four letter word. You know, yeah. We we do so many of these beautiful programs on Huda, but I think majority of the programs just go over the top of people's head. They don't make an impact. Really, what we need to do is we need to connect with our audience. Link and connection is very important. If this half an hour that we are, we are talking, if they don't really take anything away from it, that take home message. That they don't take any message. Then we wasted this time. Mm -hmm. It's very important that that we try. We may, you know give practical examples and make an impact on people's life. Just imagine you have an accident and your last word before you die is the four-letter word. You know, how are you going to meet your Lord as a Muslim? So really, it, we, we have to, this is something that we have to acquire. Every time there is, there is a trial, there is a problem, we must say, Subhanallah, Astaghfirullah, you know, anything from, from our deen, but not use a swear word, mm. which, which most of us, this is, this is immediate reaction, mm. it comes to us. That is one, one place where you need patience is where you know you you're uh, faced with unexpected uh, uh, you know accident the other source of patience is like rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in life of makkah in all life of makkah they they exercise and and of course medina as well when it when it was required and needed but look at the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in makkah all the time their whole family clan everybody turned against them and they had really bitter experiences and even coming back from Daif, look at you know when when the angels came and said that if you if you if you tell us or you you want from us to crush these people between two mountains, we will do it. And Rasulullah said no. Maybe these day one day these people will become Muslims. Mm -hmm. So the Allah's Prophet always so awesome. always changed negative into positive. And these people, of course, you know some of these people become Muslim afterwards. Of course, and. And look at the the time when the, the Muslims were pushed out to this place called uh, Shab uh, bin Talib. Yes, Bani Talib. They they spent uh, twelve months, something like that. There they spent, and that time was extremely difficult time, and testing time. But they didn't didn't lose their patience. The Muslims were under siege. Under during siege. That time, yeah. But they didn't lose the pa lose the patience. So it's that is another uh, example of patience. Then. Today's Muslim, the biggest problem that we have, and I'm going to cover all these three in, in this segment. The, the third one is where uh, we, we like to live an American dream, and we want it like yesterday. Mm. We don't have patience. We don't have patience until we get what we want. In, in all the Muslim countries, the, the, the experience that I have of Muslims is they say, oh, Egypt's no good, Pakistan's no good, Malaysia's no good, I need to go abroad. Why? Because I don't have the patience and I'm not prepared to work hard. Mm. I want it yesterday. Mm. We want to be millionaire overnight. I want to s go to bed. I love, a, I love a, what a, you're a, saying a is beggar? we don't we don't just want to you know we don't want it today. We want it yesterday. We want it yesterday. Yeah. We we really what we what we trying to do is because we think that you know maybe uh, grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Yeah. So we think maybe you know if we go to Europe or America, we'll become rich very fast. This is this is a, a delusion that we, we live in. And and also when you see many, many rich people in Malaysia, in, in Egypt, in Pakistan, and rightly so, and they 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 worked hard for it. And these people are the ones they they dream and they work for their dreams. Mm. But the majority of people in our countries, sadly they don't have the patience and they don't want to work. They wanna they wanna become rich overnight. Beautiful point. Zakallah khairan. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, go ahead and uh, take a quick look, inshallah, at a report from Sheikh Tawfiq Shodri talking about tests in life and patience. We'll be right back, inshallah, after this report. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on a straight path. Sometimes life throws a span in the works. You might be planning a marriage with a sister or a brother in Islam and then everything is going well but then suddenly the marriage is called off. 
you might be planning for a massive holiday but subhanAllah something happens and then again the holiday is called off. You might be planning for a beautiful life with a few children and a beautiful house in the prairie and uh, mashallah to be a, a righteous religious family but subhanAllah something goes wrong, your health strikes you or something else happens and unfortunately this beautiful dream that you had doesn't really pan out like your dream. No doubt life does have spanners in its place for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us in the Quran that He would test us again and again in many different ways. And we will surely test you. Be shay'in min al khawfi wal By some things of fear and poverty, right? Of, of hunger. Wal ju'i wa naqsi min al amwali wal anfusi wa thamarat. And loss of life and wealth and business and, and commerce. Know that Allah Azza will test us in many different ways. وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ However, give glad tidings to the patient ones. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Those who when a musibah, a difficulty strikes them, they say, Verily, we belong to Allah Azza wa and to Him is our return. So brothers and sisters in Islam, don't be negative when something uh, negative strikes you. Yeah? Remember, the negativity is you perceiving it. Actually, it's actually positive because everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is always for a positive cause. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. He wants good for us and He wants us to be better and, and have an eternal life in goodness in Jannah. So no doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He decrees something for us, must have a good intention behind it. There is a silver lining in the cloud. And if you think things are not working out for you, that's because perhaps you need to open up your mind and look for the positivity in something. Perhaps Allah wants to educate us about something. Perhaps Allah wants us to have patience. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to increase our reward. Perhaps Allah wants to save us from something evil and harmful for us, right? So think about it. We look at things in a very narrow perspective. Allah looks at things globally. There's nothing called pure evil in Islam. There's nothing purely evil. Even the loss of your wife, even the loss of your daughter and husband, even the loss of your children, the loss of your parents is not evil. At the end of the day, there must be a lesson in it for us, a benefit, benefit in it for the believer, either in reward, either in patience, either in coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be positive and inshallah ta'ala, your difficulty will become easy to bear. Keep me on the straight path, your mercy out of ways your Keep me with your righteous company. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters, to our program, The Straight Path. Uh, Sheikh Shabir, we're talking just before, um, you know, we took a look at this report uh, about the importance of patience. You know, you're saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, really, the, especially the time in Mecca, that was 13 years of, of absolute patience that he, yes. that he was there, and also, of course, in Medina as well. I think that, you know, you, you've got to look at it today. Uh, you know, we think that whenever there is any kind of oppression, Oppression is, is really, really, uh, it eats away all your good deeds. It's like having a rucksack. F you, you know, you put in all the, the good deeds in it and it's leaking out of the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a hole. And, and oppression, and, and I think that some kind of, some, some oppression you can challenge it. Mm. You know, it's, but when the oppression gets to a stage where if by you challenging it, it's gonna, it's gonna harm you and the society more. Then you got to exercise the patience and wait until the right moment. Mm. Just, just look. You know, we. That's uh, a very Muslim important point, especially start with things happening in the Muslim world today. In the Muslim world, I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was in a situation today, where there was a lot of people, and and one brother uh, from an African country, he, he, he lost it. So mm. I said, look, I sat him down, and I said, look. I said, you know, you've got to have some patience. I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, the paradise is not, it's not gonna come easy. You know? It's, if it, it's, you've got to really be gonna be put to a lot of tests in life. And I said to him, look, you look at the people in Burma, our Muslims brothers and sisters. Yes. I was watching a program today, the, the kind of suffering and oppression that those yeah. people go I was through. just talking about this in the first segment, subhanAllah. Yeah. But I tell you on. something, yeah. that the kind of, kind of difficulty and oppression, the Burmese people, I said, just imagine if you were there. Mm. Look at Syria at the moment. The kind of oppression and difficulty. And you know, I see some sisters and mothers, 
you know, you, s you look at them, they have nothing. And you know what they say? When people ask them, what are you going to do about it? I say, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You know? That's and exercising it patience. It really, it really it makes me cry. Because, you know, those are the people that are tested. Now, like, we, I've never been tested like that. Mm. So I said, you know, this little problem here that you've seen and you've, you've lost it, I said, just imagine, mm. you know, your brothers and sisters suffering out there. So I think that, that you know, this is a test for you. If you, if you put through a trial and tribulation and difficult times, we, we've got, we will face some difficult times. Just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, it gives you enough strength yeah. and character to deal with it patiently. I think that paradise is not going to, going to come easily and and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test us all but just hope that you know when that test comes to you you stay patient and it gives you enough strength subhanahu wa ta'ala to 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 pull through it and I in this program I like to make a request to all the presenters and speakers of Huda TV and all the other Islamic channels uh, is the request is that they use some ter English terminology that really, I think the scholars uh, with more knowledge, because I'm not very knowledgeable, they should look into it and maybe advise me as well. They use the term like uh, fortunate and fortunately. It is, for, Fortuna is, is a Greek god of fortune. So English language, you know, you, we, have to, we have to be very careful when you, we use this vocabulary. We've got to check it and make sure that it is, <laughs> as, a, as a Muslim, it is right for us to use. Also using word like lucky. Lucky is l from sorcery, from magic. So, you know, we have to find, uh, uh, if, if it is okay to use, then please let me know. But if it isn't, then we have to find alternative words to use instead of these words. I've seen in entirely all our pre presenters in, uh, in Huda use that word and use frequently. That is, that is one request. The other request is that the would-be writers, Islamic writers, if there is any out there, Please write a simple book, a simple book, a role model, Rasulullah as a role model. Because there is so many books, but they're so comprehensive and so difficult, and they go over people's head. Mm. Today's youth just wants, when they're uh, in school, they want an arm over their shoulder and show a bit of love and sympathy. Because uh, at schools, students face a lot of difficulties. Yes. So from a For teacher sure. to be a role model, can somebody write a, a very basic, simple book, how Rasulullah dealt with youth? Because we need to connect with our youth today. Really, our youth is in, in a big, big problem and trouble, and that is going to get us into trouble, because that's our future. Yes. I see, I see Egyptian youth, let me tell you that. Uh, the good news is that I have not seen Egy Egyptian youth uh, like I've seen Egyptian youth, uh, youth in Pakistan, youth in Malaysia and places, Egyptian youth is, is really good. I've, ex I've had a lot of good experience. They messed up, but still when you challenge them, they put their eyes down. They look down, they don't, they don't look at you into your eyes. Mm. That is a, a very good sign. And we need to work on them. Before, slowly, you know, we lose them completely. I think that, you know, our youth is very, very important. And, and I see a disconnect and, and a lot of programs, you know, these programs cost a, for a lot of money. I was going to use the word fortune again because, it's, you know, so set in our, uh, yeah. our mindset. But, you know, we have to, we are blessed. We have people like Huda Channel. People put a lot of money and, and effort into it. So the time is, this time is very valuable. We've got to make an impact. You know, people that are watching us, they've got to go away with something. And I think that, you know, if they're going to be tested and they're going to have difficult times, you know, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think, this is what you, you, you have to acquire. Definitely. You know, when in a difficult situation, when you really lose it, and you, you got, you're in, in anger, and I do, I do, do a, a anger management program, Islamic prospectus. Mm. Inshallah, maybe, you know, if I got a chance, I'll, I'll do that sometime for you. That would be nice. For the hair. Yeah. Uh, and, and anger management, what you got to do is, you know, like, you know, in the, in the, in the Sharia, it says, that uh, from, from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you're if you standing up, you sit down. Yes. Yeah, if, you, if you're still, ha still angry, you lie down. And then you make wudu and you pray to rakah. Mm. How beautiful. You know, it just diffuses the tension. Exactly, and it's very simple as it's well. It's very simple you know, to anybody do Anybody can easy. do it. You don't need, you know, uh, no, extra no, no, equipment no. or anything like that. Well, Islam is very, very simple. Yes. 
Very simple. Exactly. On that note, inshallah, we'll take a short break. When we come back, my dear brothers and sisters, we'll continue talking about patience and we'll talk more practically about solutions of how we can develop this virtue. Bismillah ta'ala, stay with us. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on a straight path. Keep me on a straight path. Your mercy out of ways your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have to smile because uh, I guess that is part of being patient. No matter what you're going through in your life, uh, you need to be smiling, inshallah. What do you think about that? Well, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a charity smile. Yeah. Smiling is, you know, it, it, you, you make somebody's, somebody's day. Definitely. Uh, I was one to once told a beautiful, beautiful story about how your, your courtesy could travel from Cairo to maybe New York, Kuala Lumpur, on the same day. Mm. You just pull out the, the street and you're on the main road and somebody wants to pull out in front of you and you let them out in the car with a smile. And that person happens to be an airline pilot flying to New York, mm. maybe flying to Kuala Lumpur. He is, because you, sh you showed that bit of courtesy first thing in the morning for him or her, that he could be, he could be dishing out that, that courtesy in New York in the afternoon or in Kuala Lumpur the next day. So it, you know, the, the good feelings travel and travel a long, long way today. It's, it's the, the world's become a s very small place. Definitely. And, and Especially we through the internet. And, and, and uh, really sadly, this is where, you know, I think that, you know, our, our preaching, our lectures are not really making an impact. Today, the, the, the life of uh, the, the, the satellite channels, the internet, the, you know, the, all the, the, the media that we have, yeah. bombarded with it. But it's not really making an impact because our people changing. Are Muslims changing? You know, this is where the first thing that we must must recognize, and we're not recognizing that, is that I am I have a problem. Being being patient, again, you know, if somebody has a problem, you know, is angry all the time, needs patience. Now that person needs first of all, before a doctor gives you a prescription, a doctor needs to to prognose. You know, he needs to find out yeah. from you where your problem is. Until he knows the problem, he left to have some tests done. He cannot give you, prescribe you the medication. Yeah. So really, we need to need to admit first of all that that we are broken as a society. We have a problem. You know, our ummah has been in stagnation for three hundred years, and nothing has happened good for us. And we are not prepared to change. If we don't change, time is running very fast. It's not going to wait for nobody. And like, you know, if we, if, we have pay, if we have a problem, if we have anger problem, we have to sit down and first of all admit that we have a problem. Mm. And then we need to look to solutions from the, the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and look, open the Quran is full of advice. Yes. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, life is full of advice. The life of Sahaba is full of advice. Yes. The stories but of the prophets. But are we? Prophet stories of prophets. Are we prepared to take that advice? Yeah. And, and on this note, I'd like to mention my seven grandchildren that will be watching me in England yeah. right now. Sarah, Fad, uh, Jueria, Umair, all of them. Alhamdulillah, I'd like to give them my salam. MashaAllah. We have Brother Musa actually calling us from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Musa on Skype. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for calling us, Brother. Do you have um, a question or a comment? I have two questions. Yeah. Questions. The first question is, oh, I want to know the reward for being patient. Excellent question. Okay, what's, what's the second Hello? question? What's the second question? Hello? Yes, Brother Musa, that was an excellent question. Tell me the second question, please. Okay. If, if, um, if one is being offended and he gives this part of being patient, if Have someone is being question? offended, right? Yes. Okay. Zakallah khair. Barakallah feek. Beautiful questions, mashallah. 
What's the uh, first question? So, Brother uh, Musa's first question was, what's the reward of being patient? What's the reward of being patient? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly says, you know, in, in, in Surah Al-Fasr, success, paradise. Hmm. And that's that the, the, the reward is, is mentioned, you know, all over the Quran. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to do something, and, and obviously the, the reward is, the, wha what's the, what is the purpose of us all doing all these things? Yeah. You know, why, why we do what we do? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get the paradise. That's the prize. Uh, the second question is, is about what? The second question is uh, if, if a person, uh, you know, uh, someone is like being bad to them. You know, what, 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 like is this part of being patient? SubhanAllah. Look at life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the, the person that used to throw garbage at them, yeah? Isn't that, isn't that an, a, a, an offending action? Definitely. It'll, Definitely. It, will, it will offend us and we will hit back. But I think that we need to be rather than reactive, we need to be proactive, and also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa turn so that so. negative into positive. How Definitely. did they do it? When it didn't happen, they find out, and that person was sick, so they went to the visitor. Yeah. yeah. And look at the impact that made. Definitely. So I think that we, what we need to do is, whatever happens, you know, people offend us, we just need to step back. Because, you know, in my life, I've, had, I've done many, many businesses, and I have fail with some of them. And when I fail, I, I, I take it on my chin and I step back. And I learn more. I don't call it a failure. I call it either I pass or I learn. Mm. So you know, when somebody offends you, the best thing you could do is take, take a step back. You know, and don't react. This is what I'm, I was, was talking about earlier on. We use bad language and we, we speak without thinking. I think that of course, uh, you know, when, you, when you're angry, you're not going to react properly. So you've got to give yourself time. The first and most important thing is that, that by that time, move back if you can. It's very difficult, but this is something that you have to acquire. You know, some people are born with it. They're very cool. Mm. Very, very cool. I had, a, I had a problem with one English driver once. He, he offended me. He did something really, really silly. And I went and he was sat having a a cup of tea and uh, reading a newspaper. So I started shouting and swearing at him and calling him all sorts. This is going back 30 years. And this guy, uh, you know, sat there, kept on reading his newspaper as though he wasn't even listening. And when I finished, you know, I had I'd said everything I had to say. He looked up and he says, are you okay, Flower? You know, as though he, that he didn't hear anything. You know, this is something that, uh, there's some beautiful examples in your life where people are so cool. Even, you know, in face of all the, the bad language and, the, and, and the, uh, everything that you throw at them, this is, this is natural for some people. But others, some of us, we have to, to acquire how to react. You know, as anger management is very important. And I think especially, especially in your house. Definitely. With your family, Definitely. with your children, with your wife. Speaking of that, we have a very beautiful story about uh, Prophet Ayub that we want to take a look uh -huh. at. Uh, this is uh, the story of Prophet Ayyub and how he exercised patience. This is a story told by Sheikh Shadi Sulaiman. Let's go ahead and take a look, inshallah. Keep me on the straight path. Your mercy outweighs your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on the straight path. Ayyub alayhi salam is that prophet and messenger of Allah of great example and role model in patience that it's becoming very common that to say sabr ayyub referring to that great example and role model ayyub alayhi salam ayyub alayhi salam was that prophet and messenger that lived in comfort that lived in in extreme wealth he had seven boys and seven girls and he was extremely wealthy and he had one wife then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him through the test. What was the test? His 14 children, seven boys, seven girls were all taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was extremely wealthy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took all his wealth away from him. And not only that, he was healthy. Allah made him so ill and so sick that people would not even go near Ayyub alayhi salam because of his illness and his condition. So being so wealthy to being so poor, so healthy to be so ill, from having a number of children, 14 kids, 
Seven boys and seven girls to no children. And he had his wife and And Ayyub alayhi salam is in that state for years. 17 years and Ayyub alayhi salam is in that state. His wife will come up to him and say to him, Oh Ayyub! Oh Ayyub! We can't handle this test anymore. Oh Ayyub! This calamity is going beyond its limit upon us. That she will work during the day just to sustain herself and her husband. That at the end she went and sold her own hair just to bring some income to Ayyub alayhi salam. And Ayyub alayhi salam got angry from her when she said, we cannot handle this test anymore. He said, how long we were in comfort for? She said, for 70 years. He said, I am too shy to raise my hands to Allah after 70 years of test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me 70 years of comfort. 70 years of wealth, 70 years of health, 70 years of happiness. Now after 70 years of calamity and hardship, you want me to raise my hands to Allah and say, yeah, Allah, I can't handle it anymore. But then Ayyub, what did he say? He said, Rabbi, inni qad dhuru wa anta Oh my Lord, the harm had befallen upon me. And you are the most merciful. He didn't say, yeah, Allah, lift it away from me. Ya yeah, Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, take me away from that. He said, Ya Allah, you know my condition. And I leave it in your hands because you are the most merciful. Because if that's what you accept for me, I accept that for myself. If that's what you accept for me, that's what I accept. If that's what Allah Azza wa Jal had written for you, then you should accept what Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala had written for you. So Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala took him out of his calamity. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave him health after he was ill and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him twice as the number of wealth that he had before his calamity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him beside the 14 kids seven boys seven girls Allah gave him 14 boys and 14 girls but this is the test that Allah put Ayyub through to see the reaction of Ayyub and what was the reaction of Ayyub? Rabbi inni qad massani yadur wa anta arhamur rahimin. Oh Allah, the harm had befallen me and you are the most merciful. If I am ill, it's because of your mercy. And if I'm poor, because of your mercy. Because Ya Allah, you've gave me so much and I have no rights to object. This is the quality of the mu'min. Keep me on the straight path. Your mercy outweighs your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters. That was the story of Prophet Ayyub alayhi um, salam. Let's go ahead and take a look at our weekly poll that we posted on Facebook. We asked you on Facebook, uh, do you consider, your, consider yourself a patient person? Do you consider yourself a patient person? Uh, some good self-evaluation. 64% of our brothers and sisters, Sheikh Shabir said yes. 36% said no. Thank you so much for your participation. I want to hear your thoughts about Mashallah, that. MashaAllah, excellent. Excellent. But uh, I, I believe majority of these people will be young people because, you know, they, they, uh, they're only, uh, it's only young people that are literate uh, and uh, will be on Facebook as well. Mostly, yeah. And, and look, the young people, they're, they're one of the biggest problem. They, are, they face many, many problems. The one of the biggest problems, and they need to be patient in that, is finding a, a suitable person to marry. MashaAllah, yes. Marry is a big problem. And also, it tests the patience to the limit, whether it's a, it's a male or a female, boy or a girl. There really is sisters and brothers out there. They get into their late 20s and 30s and late 30s and even into 40s. I know sisters, you know, who are in the 40s. But the, the problem, we make that as parents, as communities, as society, we make it very difficult for them. You know, marriage is a very simple, easy, easy affair. Islamically, you know, look at, you know, the, the way Rasulullah married and, and, and the Sahaba yeah. married. When we say affair, we don't mean the Western no, meaning no, 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 of no, the no, word no. affair. Um, we're yeah. not talking about the, 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 the affair. Of affair. I'm talking yeah. about the, the business of, uh, of marriage. You know, yeah. it's, an, it's, a, it's a simple it's easy process. It's a simple and easy process. But we, with, 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 with a, a cultural baggage, with other issues, with, with, with clans, with families, we, we make it so difficult. 
I know, well, I can't marry my daughter this year because her auntie lives in Canada, she can't come this year. Next year, she's got a oh, brother in uh, South Africa, he can't have a holiday, he can't come. Yeah. What, a, what, a, you know, awful excuses. You know, when, when you're, uh, you know, the, the, the hookum about marriage is when your daughter or your son are old enough, and if you can afford to marry them, don't delay, by a day. Get them married. You know, get them married. And, and that, you know, it, it, it a, a person's mind is not, is not actually normal. If he's, if he's old enough to marry, and, and for some whatever reason he doesn't marry, then it's not complete. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a major issue. You've been there, I've been there, yeah. and you're probably still there. Uh, but you're married now. Alhamdulillah. But, but I tell you, if our young people need all the help in the world, and the one of the biggest thing after the tarbiya and education the parents can do help them is find help them find a suitable partner and make it easier for them to marry definitely i see a lot of uh, pa parents with the, with the daughters they say oh well the boy hasn't got the, uh, the house he hasn't got a car he hasn't got this he hasn't got that astaghfirullah you know let them get started oh, together and brothers, so love lessons. brothers and sisters where you know do you think that you know you will ever get that yeah you know, let, like you say, let them get together. And when they get together, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. Maybe, Definitely. you know, th th that is what the, 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 the things are waiting for them. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time here this evening. No no Good to be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being with us here this evening. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this past hour was an hour of his remembrance and something that we benefited from, inshallah. Let's try our best to, as always, inshallah to learn and to practice. Let's try to be patient as much as we can in our personal lives. And let's be patient as an ummah as well, inshallah. Thank you so much for being patiently with us here this evening. Jazakumullah khairan. We'll see you again next week, inshallah, at 9 p.m. Mecca time live right here on The Straight Path. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Every day for my guidance, Lord, because you're the one I totally rely on. Ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Every day I'm praying for my guidance, Lord. You're the one I totally rely on. Cause people change like the seasons, but you, you have never let me down. You're always with me. Oh Lord, keep me on the straight path. I'm certain that this world won't last. And keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on the straight path. Your mercy out of ways your wrath. Keep me with your righteous company. Keep me on the straight path.